What's going on everyone? Welcome, welcome. And today is a very special day. A very, very, very special day. Today is the birthday of Malcolm Little, a.k.a. El Haj Malik Al Shabazz, a.k.a. and more popularly known as Malcolm X. For those who don't know who Malcolm X was, he was a Muslim minister, a advocate and a freedom fighter for black people in America and all over the world, but more specifically in America. But that's that's what made him special, but that's not all what made him special. That's just a small piece of what made Malcolm X Malcolm X. What made him special is really the story of Malcolm Little becoming Malcolm X. Malcolm Little was but the whole story is the story of change redemption to me it's one of the greatest stories of human evolution and human transformation we probably will ever get in our lifetime you can also read about this in his autobiography, Autobiography of Malcolm X, where he talks about his life growing up, the things he did. When you hear people today talking about, um, you know, you may hear people say, you know, how they used to sell this drug or be with these many women and how they were a gangster. Malcolm Little embodied that story or that narrative of being a quote unquote gangster. Everything, every crime under the sun you can think about, or almost every crime you can think about, Malcolm Little was there. He gambled pimp, drug dealer, drug user, you know, he was about that life. He was all the way about that action, you know, ran with some crazy gangs like Bumpy Johnson. For those who don't know who Bumpy Johnson is, Go look Bubby Johnson up. All right. They hang. It, 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 see, this is when he was known as Detroit Red. People know Malcolm X, and people may even hear about the name Malcolm Little, but a lot of people don't know about Detroit Red. The Detroit Red, they called him Red because of his, his skin complexion and his hair. He was a light skin, light skin dude with kind of like a brownish reddish hair <sighs> Detroit Red another person who was along with him during these, this time was a man by the name Chicago Red now for those who don't know who Chicago Red is you may know him as Red Fox Red Fox and Malcolm Little ran, ran with each other Detroit Red and Chicago Red. They hung out together. Bump, he hung out with Bumpy Johnson. So that that tells you, that gives you an idea of what type of life Malcolm Little, Detroit Red, was living. He lived that life. People say they're about that life, they were in that life. He lived that life. You know, in the 
in the in the thirties and forties. He he lived that life. Then something happened. Like most people who are in that criminal life, a lot of them get caught, meaning the law got them. All right, the law got him. He went to jail. He went to jail, and according to his account, and according to the accounts like to, of others and people who, like, in the, uh, if you read, uh, if you look at the, the movie, the Malcolm X movie by Spike Lee, he met someone in jail who introduced him to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Now, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was a prominent black Muslim leader in the 30s and on. But it was different because Honorable Elijah Muhammad was teaching self-reliance for the black man and that the black man was God. That may not seem like much now, but during the time of the 30s, 40s, and 50s where black people were going through segregation, Jim Crow, legalized racism, to hear a man, a black man, say that the black man is God. That was revolutionary. That was dangerous to say also. So, Malcolm Little was introduced to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And he started off by reading the dictionary. There, there's a no, very well-known story of Malcolm X reading the dictionary in jail. And him learning about words and how they're used and you know how they can be used to subjugate someone but if you understand language and if you understand how words are used to either entrap you or free you you can kind of get kind of prepare yourself mentally so the evolution was starting there start by reading a dictionary and he started writing letters to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And there was a correspondence there. And eventually, when Malcolm Little was released, he sought out the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and became a student of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and became a member of the Nation of Islam. This was the genesis of the man we would call Malcolm X. The reason why he was called Malcolm X and not Malcolm Little is because it was understood and taught that black people's names were not their own natural native names. When we were taken from Africa and brought here to be enslaved, one of the things they did to us was they took away our language and our names and they gave them the they gave us the names of the slave master to show ownership so we will get the last name of the slave master as as an identifier that we belong to someone so to get rid of that they would assign the letter X and in math X is known as the unknown it's a variable a variable is when you when something when a, something takes the place of a, of a number in math so X in math is identified as the unknown when something is unknown you put an X there and since during that time we didn't know who we were as a people, we said the one thing we could do is we can get rid of the last name of our former slave master and assign an X there. So he went from Malcolm Little 
to Malcolm X. Okay? Now, he has another name, El Haj Malik Al Shabazz. That name comes from we, the first part is El Haj. A Haj is a pilgrimage. Um, people in the Abrahamic uh, faith, Muslims especially, they go to the, the place of the Holy Land. For Muslims, it's Mecca. Okay? Jews is Israel. But when you make that pilgrimage, you make that Haj, it's assigned to your name. El Haj Malik. El Shabazz. Okay? That's his actual Muslim name. And he's transforming and he's becoming a very, very powerful and important advocate for black people in America through the teachings of Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Okay? Now remember, he went from being he went from being a criminal, Malcolm Little, Detroit Red, a certified criminal, to becoming a well known prominent speaker and advocate for black people. That's a total one eighty change. And during his upbringing, he left the Nation of Islam and he went off you know, in, in Africa for a time to really bridge the gap between African Americans here in America and Africans of the continent because he knew, like the government also knew, that if we were to reconnect back with our native land, our motherland, we will be more powerful because now we have we have a kinship, a reconnection, a bridge has been built. We are no longer disconnected from our native land. See, most people, even if they move from their native land, they are never culturally detached from that place of origin that they that they originate from. The language they, they speak it, they the customs they still have. You know, the ceremonies they still have, the culture they have, they bring over with them. Even though they're no longer part of that land, they bring the culture with them. When it comes to us, we were not only separated from the actual landmass, we were separated from the culture of the landmass. So we were totally detached from Africa in all forms of fashion. He saw that if we were to reconnect back with that landmass and that culture, like we and like and put it like back how we once were before we were enslaved, we'll be more powerful. And he gained a lot of eyes on him, a lot of notoriety. And unfortunately, he was killed in the Autobahn Ballroom in 1965. He was unfortunately killed assassinated he was assassinated and that was the end of his life now I, I, there's obviously more to his life than just what I'm saying it's just a brief summary but the point is people celebrate him people who are people who know who Malcolm X is you know we all know that by any means necessary and all that stuff and we've been hoodwinked bamboozled let us straight run him up we the land on Plymouth Rock, Plymouth Rock land on us, the ballad of the bullet. We, are, we know that those are his, like his highlights. But what we also celebrate, what we need to celebrate, is the transformation from Malcolm Little to Malcolm X. And understand that process. We need to understand the process that a person can go through to go from bad to good. You know, to understand the the psychological evolution, not just uh, as, a, as a person, but the mental evolution, the spiritual evolution that goes into what made Malcolm Little into Malcolm X. Because if we just quote the highlights to By Enemy Necessary and the Hoodwing Bamboozle, all that stuff, we just quote those highlights. Those are, those are his highlights. Those are his sound bites that, that we just pull from 
you know, his his teachings. But if we really if we don't take the time to fully understand the evolution of that man, then we have missed the entire point of what it means to se- of what it means to really celebrate Malcolm X and we won't understand true leadership because when you see the change that goes on in a person and you can see growth and evolution you can see how he treats you know others when you go through the evolution you know everything changes you grow out of your foolish young ways we all were young you know we all had a mindset that was just crazy when you think back on it but to change and grow to a different person that no longer hurts people or hurts themselves but helps themselves and others it's one of the greatest stories ever it's one of the greatest stories in human history and I don't think we give enough credit to that I mean we all talk about how he and Ma- he and Martin Luther King had their issues yes Malcolm X and Martin Luther King had their issues but the goals were the same the goal was to help black people that was the goal now they may have gone about it you no know, different ways and they may have bumped heads a few times but the goal was the same Malcolm X and Martin Luther King are the origins of the Marvel comic characters Magneto and Professor Xavier Stanley and Jack Kirby designed Malcolm um, designed Professor X and Magneto after Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Professor X being Martin Luther King and Magneto being Malcolm X. The whole point of this, uh, look, our goal is the same. Our methods are different. We want the we want the same thing. We want black people to be respected, to be treated like humans. How we go about it is different. But the goal is the same. And it also goes to show you that you can still disagree with somebody but have respect for them. And after Malcolm X's passing, we can see now, we can fully see the truth of his message. You know, what I grab from him is it's never too late to change. Never too late to change. As long as you're alive, there's always there's always time to change. And he changed. And you got and you saw that. He talked about it. He he never hid from the fact that the stuff he used to do. That he used to be a gangster, that he used to do drugs and pe- he, he never hid from that. He made it a point to display that and talk about that. But when you see the man he is now, you can you can see that you can see the evolution. You can say, "Yes, I did X, Y, and Z, but I've changed, and this is what I learned." And look at me now. If I can do this, coming from where I'm coming from, you can do this too. All right. Very good example to follow, and I just want to say happy birthday to Malcolm X. Thank you very much for showing us what human evolution is all about. Peace.